Like when I woke up this morning, I was feeling pretty dangerous. I don't know about the past, I don't know about the future. What's up? Uh, it's waiting Draft for that. Vice! We're here. Welcome to Draft Vice. I know I say welcome, like it's a place, it's a video, sometimes probably, a podcast. But you're probably sitting in your basement in your underwear listening to this right now. So Draft Vice is anywhere where your basement is, basically. Anywhere where your underwear is. Ew, wait. Anyway, um, yeah, we're back at Draft Vice. We're talking, we're talking. You know, we're all wearing the same clothes as the last time we were here because it's, you know, probably the same as the guy in the basement who's been watching this pretty much me um we're back we're talking free agent running backs we're talking the minnesota vikings and we're talking the the team of the of the podcast the the team of this guy the cleveland browns and uh minnesota vikings man they had a lot of turnover this year oh we also have harry by the way guys uh, i should probably introduce we have harry he's the van s uh, of of the new city, of, formerly of the oh, maybe I shouldn't talk about places. Yeah, formerly of Nanuet, now of New City. Yes, uh, breaker of change, speaker of roses, um, stander of up comedy. Uh, he is a stand up comedian, as uh, I, as I attempt to be as well. I also clean up flo- I also clean up blood from the bathroom floor of the gym. There are plenty of gyms out there, so you're probably wondering what what which one I'm talking about. But I'm gonna leave it a mystery. It's the prison gym, folks. It's the prison gym. Sometimes it feels like the prison gym. So yeah, we're we're here. We're um we're talking footballs. Uh, Harry is here to help me get through the 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 time, and I'm here to help Harry get through the time. We're here to help you guys figure out what's going on with the Minnesota Vikings, the running backs coming up in free agency, and of course, you know, I, I, he'll help me grieve about the Browns, and hopefully have a little bit of hope for the Browns. So. Let's talk about the new man on the Minnesota Vikings. Even though I don't think it's actually how the tune goes. Yeah. The Vikings are in a weird spot. They lost coaches. They've lost people. They're losing players. They're over the cap by like $10 million. They've got Kirk Cousins. But they got Gary Kubiak, so there's that. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're like $10, 12000000 million over the cap. They've got, you know, they got the Xavier Rhodes uh, messy deal. Might want to cut him. That'll save him $8 million. That still won't get them under cap, man. You gotta, you gotta get, you gotta like crunch time, right? Might, might move some Linval Joseph, right? Cut him. Kyle Trade Rudolph. Him. Kyle Rudolph is a is a potential one. Uh, cut him, save about four million. They just redid his deal last year. It sounds like he still fits in their scheme. He was a big part of that, having the two tight ends with Kyle Rudolph and Irv Smith. I think, I think they keep Rudolph. Um, especially because you have Kubiak there. They're going to keep yeah. running the same offense they did last year. I think keeping Kubiak and with the Rudolph and the Irv Smith makes it perfect. I think they're, they're going to run a lot more outs. They're going to run the same amount of outside zone as last year. I think it works for them. Uh, they uh, they lost their OC, Kevin Stefanski, which is why Kubiak's now the new OC. Uh, he's the He was there last year as an offensive assistant. Stefanski uh, moved on to, to the Browns. Cleveland. Yep, he's the new head coach. We'll talk about that in a little bit. That must be like electing a pope for you guys. Yeah, well, it happens every year. It's like electing a mayor. Not sure. Yeah, it happens so often. It's it, it, uh, we go through we go through coaching changes like people change underwear. Yeah. Like it, it, we've had more coaches in the last few years than we've had quarterbacks, which is weird because Cleveland lot. had more car- quarterbacks in the last like twenty years than most teams have had players. I don't know. They just, they just go through it. To the Vikings, to the Vikings. They're, they're over the cap. Um, Everson Griffin, I think they're going to keep him, but he has a team option. If they wanted to opt out on him, it'd be dumb if they did because yeah. they could probably replace Linval Joseph easier than replacing Everson Griffin. I say that, and I'm probably not right on that. So who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, this is just a suggestion. So they might cut him. Uh, Xavier Rhodes, Everson Griffin's on an option. They don't really have much else contracts that they can alleviate room with, though. Um couple of small contracts uh riley reef they can get rid of which yeah you'll clear some cap but you're also gonna be missing your left tackle in which case you need a new left tackle yeah uh they, yeah i i think it's gonna be a it's gonna be crunch time for the the, the vikings right they, they're over the cap uh they got kirk cousins in his last year of his deal they made it to the playoffs they won a game in the playoffs when they weren't expected to win a game in the playoffs they uh, they uh, they got to see if they're going to extend Kirk, right? Yeah. Do you extend Kirk Cousins, his fully guaranteed deal, on the last year of his fully guaranteed deal? Or are you going to let him walk? Are you going to draft somebody to replace him and hopefully replace him well? 
Um, they got Dalvin Cook. They got uh, they're they're losing a lot of players too. Uh, Trey Waynes, Anthony Harris. Anthony Harris has been amazing. Um, Andrew Sandejo. Um, Kenzie Alexander. Dude, so many yeah. defensive backs. It's just going to be – like I was saying uh, in our last episode. About the Texans. About the Texans. They need defensive backs. We well, just poach them from uh, – Minnesota. From Minnesota. Mackenzie Alexander, come here. Mackenzie Alexander was good this year too. Yeah. So, uh, again, he, you know, he was like a top 15 corner. You, know, you grab him because they're going to be losing him uh, unless they, they cut – and again, like they, even if they cut roads, they're over the cap. They they need to cut more than that. They need to restructure some deals. They need to clear some space out. And uh, with a lot of these guys walking in free agency, Dan Bailey, Dan Bailey, the kicker. I don't know how important the kicker is in football. Well, to the Bears, quite important. Uh, yeah, well, they lose every year because of their yeah. kicker. They just did the kicking woes, folks. Um, their punter, their punter is going to be leaving too. That's a you got to get Colquitt. There's like a Colquitt every year. A Britain Colquitt, Brandon Colquitt. There's a Colquitt in like every every team. They're always punters. They're like it's yeah. a big punting family. Um, oh, yeah, three of, all three of them have Super Bowl rings. A father and both brothers. Oh yeah, it's yeah. true. Wow. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the this this team's under a, a lot of stress cap wise. They do have some draft picks. They. Uh, I, I think in the first round they got to go corner. Yeah, they do. Like uh, you know, they're not they're not high enough to get a guy like uh, like my personal favorite Jeffrey Akuda, uh, or everybody's personal favorite. I'm gonna pretend like I own Jeffrey Akuda. Like that that'd be stupid. Jeffrey Akuda is everybody's Jeffrey Akuda. I also, just love the name. It sounds like Barracuda. Jeffrey Akuda the Barracuda. Um, Kyle Fol- uh, uh, K- uh, Fulton from LSU. He uh he's good. He might fall, but I don't think he's gonna fall that far. No. He might get a Jeff Gladney. He's might might be like the third cornerback in this class. Um, there's a few other ones. Uh, again, like they're they're in a weird spot because they're towards the end. Uh, they also have O line issues. Their their O line's not that good. Their O line was better at run blocking than it was at pass blocking, but their center just could not block anybody. Like it's one thing. Like centers are not usually great at pass blocking, but you still have to usually be decent. There's um couldn't block anybody if he was actually asked to pass block he was good at run blocking like he'd run a lot of outside zone he just can't reach he's got tiny little alligator arms it's a fact yes this is garrett bradbury their their center um they also have an elf line they got a couple of different guys there uh the one guy who i like brian o'neill right right tackle played really well last year he was a second round developmental guy and they took him uh, a couple of years ago and he's, he's played really well so i think that's one spot on their o line they're safe with um they have Reef. I'm not quite sure Riley Reef is going to be the future of their uh, left tackle spot, but at least he's he's solid. He's he's been serviceable for so far, and he's on a 12 million dollar deal. They can cut him. They release eight, you know, get eight million. But what are you where are you finding another left tackle anyway? So basically, um, stick with what you got. At least at tackle, uh, they definitely need to fix that interior. Uh, Anthony Harris is going to be a big one going into free agency, um, just because he he played lights out. He was and he was a like a, a late round developmental guy that they they found a, a undrafted free agent that just developed into such a good uh, free safety last year that I think he's going to be going into the this uh, off season a, a big high ticket high money marker high ticket guy. So they're losing him. They but they've been pretty good at safety. They still have a couple of guys. Um, Trey Wayne's. Trey Waynes is weird because Trey Waynes is good if he's trying to stop you from going vertical. He's not good if you can go lateral. So, like, he can – he's probably good if you're sticking him on, like, a guy like a Will Fuller, uh, somebody who can't re- – like, who, who runs straight lines really well but it's not really, like, a uh, beat you sideways kind of guy. So, I, I don't see them being particularly pressed to re-sign him. But, again, everybody's been talking about Rhodes. Rhodes is done. What happened? He fell off a cliff. He looked like Patrick Peterson for like a year and a half. Yeah. He literally looked like they cloned Patrick Peterson, but like now he's degrading. Like he just, like he ages quicker because he's, he's a, a clone. Tremaine Johnson now. He, yeah, basically. Well, uh, yeah, basically he's yeah. Tremaine Johnson. Yeah. He, he's just, oh, wow, you're 6 1 and you, you kind of can play corner. Kind of. Well, hopefully. Maybe they, you know, maybe they trade some guys. Uh, maybe they trade for some guys. Maybe they get some guys in free agency that are going to come a little bit cheaper. Uh, like I said, Bashad Breland is going to be available. Uh, Mo Claiborne. 
guys who are lower ticket contracts, Prince of Mukamara, they're not going to go after some big ticket names for corner because, again, they don't really have any money. In fact, they, like I said before, they're in the red. So I think the question is, is what are you doing after this year with Kirk Cousins? Hell if I know. Uh, or do you even extend Dalvin Cook? Like, look at Dalvin Cook. Guys had injury history, but, dude, when he's played, he's been good. He's been, oh, yeah. He's been amazing. Love Dalvin Cook. But what are you going to do? Are you going to just keep playing him? Are you going to Are you going to sign him? Or are you just going to wait till next year and franchise tag him? Uh, is that going to lead to some animosity? Yeah. Uh, you know, even if you franchise tag him, you keep him on the team for another year after this, you know, like, is there a, is, does it make sense to extend him beyond that? Or is it going to end up being like a Todd Gurley situation, which has just been a mess? Yeah. He's... So, I I like the team. You know, and then there's also questions about Diggs and Thielen. Diggs might be getting out of town. That's the big one. Uh, you know, is, are they going to trade Stephon Diggs? Are they utilizing Stephon Diggs? A lot of people go like, oh, they don't utilize him like they should. And if that's the case, if they're going to get some picks, like they probably need picks. They probably need to replenish their roster. Getting rid of Diggs and trading them away probably gets you, A, a pick and gets you some cap space, yeah. preferably. So I think that's a, a potential thing. They have a couple, a good stable of running backs. Uh, corner, they, you know, they might be able to move on from Rhodes and still be able they were They were getting beaten pass coverage last year, man, yeah. especially against Rhodes. I keep mentioning Rhodes because it's just like, dude, it's, it's, you watch this guy. Their linebackers are amazing. Yeah. You got Kendricks. Anthony Barr. Kendricks and Barr. Kendricks, man. Last year, Kendricks just like, took that next step forward with the elite level Kendricks. Yeah. I loved watching Kendricks play. Their D line is good, but they're going to probably have to take a step back on that because, again, you have to clear up some space. You either got to get rid of Griffin or Joseph, and then you got to find a guy to replace one of those guys. So it, it, it's going to be interesting to see how this team. Again, a team that's had a lot of overturn uh, uh, overturn at the coaching position, right? Uh, they got rid of their D coordinator, and they promoted two guys. They're going to have two guys co-coordinating the defense. And, and this has become more of a popular thing. You'll have, like, a pass game coordinator, like a defensive backs coach who's kind of more calling the stuff from the back end, like a Chris Richard yeah. kind of situation. It seems like that's going to be the idea here. They're going to have co-D coordinators. They're, uh, and we're basically let them fight it out to see who's going to really win to be the coordinator. Yeah. Um, good safety core, good, good, uh, you know, they're losing one of the better ones they have, but just because they've had other guys there, um, slot corner, they've been pretty weak at, and, you know, their D line's been solid, you know, Danelle Hunter's a beast. That's, I mean, one of the most underrated D linemen, I think, Danelle Hunter. Um, and then you have Everson Griffin on the other side. That's a team that, going into this draft, has to have a strategy of how they want to go forward, right? Um, first round, I think you have to go corner. I, I don't even think that's even an option not to go corner. Yeah. Um, or it, unless you're going to go tackle. If one of the good tackles draw, uh, drops to you, you have a guy like Josh Jones. Uh, I think there's three good tackles in this draft. One that I'm – and then two I'm kind of mixed on. And then a bunch that I'm, like, intrigued by, right? You got – Top of the draft, you got Wirfs, Wills, and Thomas, right? Those guys, I think, are all good tackles. I think they're all going to be good offensive linemen in the NFL. Then you got Mekhi Becton. Guy doesn't take a lot of pass sets, but uh, uh, professional pass sets. But dude's a brick shit house. has good flexibility. Uh, is going to be a, an amazing run blocker. Dude's like 6'7", uh, 300 billion pounds. Like He's, he's yeah. giant. He's, uh, if you, he couldn't fit in this room if we, we had brought him in. He's, he's huge. Huge. And uh, following him is probably Josh Jones, a uh, guy who, a little sloppy, extremely athletic, a little sloppy. Kind of reminds me of Colton Miller, who uh, is on the uh, Raiders, right? He's played left tackle for the Raiders. Came out a little, you know, very athletic, a little sloppy. This guy had a couple of coaching issues. So, again, like, if you're looking at it like, hey, we have Reef for maybe, like, a one more year. Reef's getting towards the end of his deal. He's getting older. Um, O'Neal's been good. Honestly, if worse falls to the the end of the first round, I could see that happening because people might look at worse as a guard, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. He's a little smaller, um, very athletic. He'd be an elite level guard if he played guard. He's like a Zach Martin kind of guy. Yeah. Um, I could see them going for him if he's starting to fall. That would fill out the rest of their roster uh, a little bit on the offensive line side of it. 
And again, defensively, you got to go safety, right? There, there's uh, and it's a, an interesting safety class. I don't know what, what do you uh, what do you think about their performance last year? It seemed weird. Like they started like, out and they were all running. It was just running. Kirk Cousins didn't even seem like he was doing anything. Then they like took a step forward a couple of games. Then he had like some of the best games of his career. Oh yeah. And now they're losing. Like even on the offensive side, they lost to Fansky. Um, brought in Gary Kubiak, like you said. Yeah, Kubiak and his son were there. His son was the QB coach, and Kubiak was the offensive assistant. Now they're like, hey, just we already had you in the building. Why don't we just go ahead and have you do it? Be be with us for the rest of the, for the the long haul. You get to be an OC. We love you. You know, Super Zimmer. Bowl, oh yeah, Super Bowl winning head coach. Yeah, and, and Zimmer also seems to prefer like it's weird. We're starting to see this trend where the older coaches like older guys, the younger coaches like younger guys. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I I could see this going very well for them. Like I, I honestly thought they were going to go for Shermer. That was the other guy who I thought was a potential. He ended up going to the Broncos. So they sat there and said, "Well, we got Kubiak in house. Let's go Kubiak, and, and move on up." You're going to see the same scheme utilized last year. A lot of outside zone runs, a lot of play action, uh, using fullback. Uh, Ham is a restricted free agent. That was the fullback. I'm not just naming foods. But uh, they also have Adam Thielen, which I, I want to see what happens the second year in this offense with Adam Thielen, right? He was injured a lot last year. Uh, they got a lot of uh, production at OBC Johnson. They got some, you know, they still had Diggs being Diggs. So. But there is a question as to whether he's kind of becoming a, a headache in the locker room. Yeah. So because there because there was rumblings about him maybe getting traded to the Giants earlier in the year. Yeah, and I mean, what's his value? What's his trade value? Is it a first round pick? Is it a second round pick? I I think yeah. I am minimal. I think he's definitely worth a second round. No, pick. I think he'd be worth the first, honestly. You think it's a first? You, yeah. So. If, Alan Diggs. What level first? You think like maybe end of the first round? Maybe like, first? Maybe like mid level, I think. I, oh, like kind of like, like how the Browns traded like a first and a the Peppers and a, a third for, round for pick o, what, for, for OBJ. ODB. Yeah. Uh yeah. I mean, I guess like if you're a team that's maybe on the cusp of like you were like on Patriots. the Patriots. Yeah. Patriots. If the Patriots did that. Yeah, but I think they have a and the Patriots have done that. Yeah, I know they have done that, but I think the Vikings have another receiver would be a better fit for them. I'm talking about Adam Thielen. I think Thielen will be a much better oh, fit. Oh, because he's white. And a slot guy, but... But they have slot guys. Slot We're guys also are, white. So, slot guys are getting easier to project to the NFL, it seems like. Yeah. Because they're getting an easier release off the line of scrimmage. Yeah. And I, I think... And also, Thielen's played outside. He's played flanker quite a bit. Uh, it's actually more of a shock that Stephon Diggs did manage to move to to X. And by the way, Stephon Diggs started as a, as a slot guy yeah, in sure, the NFL. Sure. I, if I'm... And I think what they... what what the Patriots need would be a guy like Diggs. So if I'm if I'm the Patriots, I'm calling up Minnesota. If I'm Minnesota, I'm at least listening because good draft for receiver this year. So if I'm Minnesota, I'm like, you know what? Maybe I can get a guy like Henry Ruggs or Jerry Judy. Maybe I could use some of this capital to move up and get a quarterback. And maybe I get to extend my time in Minnesota, clear up our cap issues. Because, again, nothing clears your cap issue better than a rookie quarterback on a rookie contract, yep. rookie deal. Rookie, rookie, rookie. So we've been talking about free agents, and we've been talking about you know some of these teams and who they're going to pick up. There's a lot of free agents coming on the market at running back. Oh, yes. You know, There's Derrick Henry. There's Jordan Howard. There's Melvin Gordon. There's Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt's a restricted free agent. Sure. So he may or may not, yeah. but honestly, if you saw what happened with him a couple of weeks ago with the Browns, uh, and his uh, he got a, he didn't get a DUI, but he was driving. He probably wouldn't have passed a drug test. He was saying uh, they found some marijuana on him, but they didn't arrest him for it. But the video kind of leaked out. Yeah. Um. So I got Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake, uh, who Arizona is looking at potentially franchise tagging if they could figure out their whole David Johnson issue, right? Uh. That's a you know that's a guy who by we didn't even, we talked about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers we never tagged uh, David Johnson to the the Buccaneers yeah. I guess it be with this old coach who knew how to use him. Forgot David always... Johnson even existed. <laughs> yeah right well because Kenyon Drake just like showed up. Yeah. So yeah that's a, uh, they have uh, David Johnson and uh, so yeah David Johnson who might be you know 
cut, released, traded. He's got a weird contract, but they want to maybe tag Kenyon Drake to keep him. Mm-hmm. You got Damian Williams, again, another running back who was in the Super Bowl. Arguably could have been Super Bowl MVP. Well, uh, like I thought Mahomes showed, but like some people are saying, Damian Williams. Yeah, he had that nice little squat catch. He had a lot of good. He and that good run, and that and good, good run, run, good run to seal the deal. Yeah, uh, uh, Damian Williams uh, showed out in that game, uh, and I, I think he he deserves to be somewhere. Um, whether it's on the Kansas City Chiefs, I don't know if they can afford him or not. Uh, I think Melvin Gordon's an interesting one. Yes, I think he's probably the most interesting because him and. Wherever he goes, he's probably the currently the best one on the market, right? Yeah, I, I would take him over Derrick Henry. Uh, I I take Derrick Henry, but they're really? both. Really? Yeah, I think Derrick Henry is more scheme specific. True. I think yeah. you need a power run or an outside. You need a run game built around Derrick Henry. You either need to be doing a lot of power running or a lot of outside zone with good blocking. You need to be doing something that works to his advantage, right? Like a, a scheme that is built around the run where you're making either the run look like the pass and the pass look like the run, or you're trying to do something where, hey, listen, we're just going to go with it. You're going to go run at the line, and all our guys, we have a good run blocking the line, which is what Tennessee had last year. Yes. Melvin Gordon's never had a good run blocking yeah. the line. He's had an okay one at moments. A lot of times he's had just total jank, and he's been good with it too. He's also gotten better at catching out of the backfield. I, I honestly, I like Melvin Gordon a lot. He's probably one of my favorite running backs. I, I think I've had him in fantasy like 10 years going. He's only been in the fifth league for four, but uh, four, five, five years. Yeah, something like that. Five years. But I've had him in the, like the last three. And not for nothing reason why I've gotten into the playoffs. Like two, two of the last three, I've had Melvin Gordon on my team. Maybe even more than that. Melvin Gordon, man. Anyway. He salute you. Um, he'd be a good one for Tampa Bay. He would, yeah. Uh, Melvin Gordon, on uh, he'd be a good one ending where he goes, to be honest. No, but if he went to a team that fit what his skill set was, which is he's a big runner, he can run power, he can run outside zone, he can make him miss, he can catch the ball, good for Tampa Bay. Uh, if I'm another team, I'm thinking the Colts. The Colts might be a, a team yeah. to look at him. All right. Uh, good O-line. Imagine him actually having a good O-line. Ooh. They get Costanzo back. They get uh, Anthony Nelson. Could be joining his former teammate, Phillip Rivers. and. That'd be cool, right? That would actually be kind of interesting if if, if wherever Philip Rivers went, Melvin Gordon went. Uh, speaking of his his teammate Austin Eckler, also a free oh, agent, yes. who filled in quite nicely for him while uh, Melvin Gordon was shockingly out. so. I'm I, again like a small small running backs don't usually be able to are not usually able to carry such a and he didn't carry a huge load, but he carried enough of the load and was efficient when it mattered. Yeah. A good pass catcher out of the backfield was basically a receiver like him and he like if you like Duke Johnson you probably like Austin Eckler they're good pass catchers out of the backfield can run a couple of routes very well they're uh I uh, I want to see where he lands I think he, actually if anything I think he might land back with uh the Chargers because I don't think it's gonna be that expensive to yeah. get him back um Melvin Gordon on I again the only problem is the running back there's only so many teams that these guys can go to right I think Derrick Henry fits what the Titans have. So if, if I'm anything, if I want any, uh, uh, perfect marriage. Derrick Henry, Titans. It, yeah, yeah, like that's it. This, that either go that way or draft somebody. That's it. Don't don't sign somebody in free agency. You, you you're drafting well enough in the first round. Like you're low enough in the first round where if you take a, a running back, it's not that big of a deal. So I could see them taking somebody like a J.K. Dobbins, a DeAndre Swift, a uh, oh Etienne's not out. ETN stayed. I forgot about that. But uh, a, a Clyde edwards a uh, Jonathan Taylor, probably. He's a, he's kind of more lower on my list than a lot of people because he fumbles a lot. So I think they'll find somebody. Either they're going to take him, re-sign Henry, or they're going to go ahead and let him walk and draft somebody. That's the Titans. Um, Although Melvin Gordon on the Titans would be an interesting would combo. Be. That's another, you know, again, Melvin Gordon on a team with an actual O-line would be relatively yes. shocking. Be kind of cool. It would be cool. Be interesting to watch. Um, thing is, there's not a lot of teams that need running back, but if I'm going to spend, I, I'd rather not spend a pick on a running back unless it's like in the second round. Yeah. Like late second. Like uh, Dolphins could probably spend uh, on a running back, but why? Like you're not at that point yet. Yeah. So, um, we mentioned Austin Eckler. Kenyon Drake, we mentioned he, dude, he showed up at the end of last he year, did. and I was uh, I was relatively surprised. 
Uh, I was impressed. He played really well, I mean, and was, they want him back. Yeah, he fits. I don't see. Team. I don't see why they wouldn't. He's been like he was good in Miami. Also, like when uh, when Jay Ajayi left to go to Philly, he he carried that load pretty well. Yeah, like he he helped one is like he helped me like clinch a first round buy in my fantasy a few years ago. There you go, man. Kenyon yeah. Drake. I I think I, I think he's uh he's like that next tier down. I think the the top two guys are clearly. Now I find it weird you want to franchise tag him because he's kind of like that franchise tag on a running back who is like Kenyon Drake level. It's kind of weird. Like who's going to be offering him more money than that? Another guy who I think might be on the market because of their cap situation and because he's a running back is Devontae Freeman. Yeah, I think he might be getting released soon. Falcons are looking to rebuild, as it seems. So. They also don't have a lot of cap space. Yeah. They got a lot of cap tied into their O line, into their defense, um, into Matt Ryan and into Julio, Julio Jones. Jones. So their cap space is very limited. They're going to have to let you know somebody go, cut somebody. You know, they didn't sign, re-sign Vic Beasley. They're not going to re-sign him. And I think they're going to get rid of because I think they're going to try and make a run at keeping Austin Hooper. I don't think they're going to be able to pull it off. But that's a team that when we get into that, their situation, it's a, that's a – they're, they're going to need to rework some things like we were talking about with the Vikings. So you're talking about Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt's a restricted free agent. That means that what happens is you put a tender on him if they tender him uh, tenderly. And you can give him a first round tender, second round tender, or original round tender. And if a team wants to tender him a contract, you can either match it or yeah, you can get a pick for him. So basically I think their their game plan is gonna to be to try to get a pick for Kareem Hunt if they tender him as a restricted free agent. Or just trade you know, try and trade his rights for something later on. Or, you know, given his more recent issues, they might just let him walk because he was a Dorsey guy. And now they've redone their whole front office. They've redone their front office. They've redone their coaching staff. And uh, are there any other running backs you want to talk about? I was thinking talk about maybe Jordan Howard a little bit. Jordan Howard's I, an interesting one, right? I was like, he's not. There's no way he's going to be back in Philly next year because they got. It looks like they got their clear number one guy, Miles Sanders, and plus Boston Scott's proved to be a solid backup. Neither of those guys are bulky though, so I could yeah. see them like if they wanted a good power back just to keep on the roster if he wasn't expensive. But you could also draft a guy like that. Yeah. So I did like how Miles Sanders came on last year. Uh Jordan Howard, it's kind of hard finding a team that fits him. He he yeah. fits a very specific thing. I could see him going for a cheap contract over to the Patriots. That would work. Because they do that all the time. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, Yeah, we'll give you like a three million dollar deal to come here and you know when get touchdowns. Rig. Yeah, win a ring and get touchdowns. That's what we want because they're the Patriots. Um, another team that might be a little under the radar, Seattle. Because you may have Beast Mode leaving. Somebody fill, you Beast Mode's probably leaving. Carson's always injured. And Rashad Penny's coming off an ACL. So they do probably need to look at running back, whether it's in the draft or free agency. Uh, getting a guy who's relatively cheaper would probably be a good idea. Uh, they could probably run for Kenyon Drake, especially because they, <sighs> they, you know, they got to see a guy, him in their division and how he played well for them and played well kind of like in a similar run style of what they would probably want. They want a guy, you know, they run a lot, but they probably want a guy who's going to hit the hole and go. And with Drake, he, he played really well in that, like, spread system. Um, Not that Seattle runs a spread system. They were running a lot more, running out of the shotgun, but running a lot of power. So it was a very uh, their their scheme is very interesting. Uh another team we were talking about the Texans. Yep, that's that's a team that Lamar might want to look at running back. That's a team that also is probably not uh, putting forth a strategy of um, you know they're losing Lamar Miller, Carlos Hyde. They're um, they I, I don't. The only they're, they're only running back is uh, Duke Johnson right now. Yeah, Duke Johnson. And I, their their team-building strategy doesn't seem to be truly identified to anybody. Yeah. So them spending on a running back like a Melvin Gordon mm -hmm. or a uh, Kenyon Drake would actually kind of make sense. Would. And they like the former Miami running backs anyway. That's why they signed Lamar Miller. They were willing to sign Lamar Miller to a big deal a few years ago. I could see them being a big player in, uh, in running back free agency. Uh and Damian Williams, again, another guy yes. who might just pop off somewhere. Is there another uh, running back that you were thinking of? Can't think of any, really. Let me pull one up here. Got 
Peterson has an option. Uh, you got Peyton Barber. Yeah, there's a lot of guys that are yeah. kind of like those are the big names as far as it goes. Um, we were talking about Kareem Hunt, and we were talking a little bit about the Browns. We said we were going to talk about the Browns on this podcast. So, uh, hey, it's official. Uh, let's talk about the Browns. They've uh, hired a new head coach, Kevin Stefanski. They hired a new GM, Andrew Barry, who was there a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, literally two years ago, left last year to go work for the Eagles. Uh, was there under Sashi Brown, was there under John Dorsey, was there when they drafted Baker Mayfield. He uh, he worked for the Colts. Uh, is, uh, Bill Polian is a big fan of his. He was there for the drafts that brought them Larry Ogunjobi and Joe Schobert, Miles Garrett, Baker Mayfield, Denzel Ward, Nick Chubb. Now, he wasn't personally responsible for every pick he wasn't personally responsible for everything that's gone on and you can't give him credit for specific ones and not you know so what i'm saying is is that he he's he knows this roster i think this is actually probably the best you probably could have went with getting a new gm because he already knows the roster yeah he also got to spend time in a different organization and bring tools in from being there going and being around howie roseman uh you know a great gm a super bowl winning team a team that is very you know, I mean, very competitive, even when they're at the, the bare minimum of what they have. Um, you know, before that, he was with the Colts. He was with Ryan Grigson. In fact, he brought in Ryan Grigson as a as an assistant. Okay, now everybody's going to be fans of Ryan Grigson because he wasn't a great general manager while he was with, uh, with the Colts. But maybe just as a scout or as a personnel guy or as an assistant, maybe a bit better of a situation. So... They bring in Andrew Barry and Kevin Stefanski. They also got uh, Joe Woods, who's going to be the new D coordinator, former uh, defensive backs coach for uh, the San Francisco 49ers. They also brought, uh, are keeping uh, Pfeiffer, the special teams coordinator. They have uh, Van Pelt, guy who hasn't called plays in a long time. QB coach quite a bit around the league, was a big fan of uh, Aaron Rodgers, was a big fan of him. Yeah, uh, Van Pelt's going to be their OC. Now, who's calling plays? They're not really sure yet about. They also brought in Bill Callahan, offensive yes. line coach for the Washington uh, Snyder team. And uh, he's, he's been around the league. Was it the Raiders? Yeah, he, was, he actually took the Raiders to a Super Bowl. There you go. Super Bowl winning. A uh, Super Bowl, Super Bowl participant. participating head coach. That's right, because uh, John Gr- it was uh, when John Gruden got traded, right? Yep. Yep. Jan Gruden. So Bill Callahan, uh, good guy to have in the room. Probably one of the best O-line coaches in the league, probably top five. It was weird because they just went from one of the top five O-line coaches to the one guy you could probably get better with than him. And so that's a good thing. You got, uh, you got Bill Callahan. You got, as far as... Uh, and Stefanski is going to probably bring in. I, I, you know, I watched the press conference, right? Stefanski wants to. The big thing he's been preaching is marrying the run with the pass and the pass with the run, right? You know, play action, RPOs, quick hitters. You know, make trying to use a little bit of a scheme diversion to kind of get people. And we see good teams do this, right? Teams that use a lot of movement beforehand. Uh, he, he seems to be like a team player. He's like, listen, we either all rise together or we fall together. And. You know, one of the big questions when he came in for the interview was, hey, are you willing to uh, give play calling duties to somebody else? And he's like, listen, I want whoever's going to be the best to situate, best for the situation to be the play caller. And he said, and we don't know who's going to be the play caller yet. So uh, I like Stefanski. I like what he did when he was in Minnesota. He had fans in the building from last year when he interviewed. This is, uh, it's going to be an interesting team. It's going to be, you know, we had talked about the head coaching hires, but I don't think they had officially announced Stefanski when we did that. And we, we thought, no, somebody put it on Wikipedia and it wasn't official yet. And then, yeah. like, a couple days later, it turned out Stefanski was the guy. But it was close because it was uh, him and Salah were uh, some uh, the runner-up options. It sounds like McDaniels was not really in the consideration after the initial interview. Um, He's got to be able to handle some of these personalities. Everybody talks about the personalities. Um, Baker, Odell. Jarvis. Jarvis is a leader, and I love Jarvis. Um, you know, the defensive side, the defense on this team is deep 
as far as D-line, but not, well, it's not deep. It is strong on the D-line, but it's not deep. That is the problem, right? There, there's been no value as to depth on the D-line. You had, uh, you have Miles Garrett coming back from suspension. Talked about the last episode with the, the racial slur thing. Um, yeah, Olivier Vernon, he was injured a lot last year. Plays pretty well when he's on the field and when he's healthy. You got Sheldon Richardson, who I think had a career year. I was, he was probably the best player on the defense yeah. last year. He was my favorite player on the defense. He's showing out. Thank you, Jets, for that player, for developing him for all those years and drafting him. Yeah. And now we signed him, and now he's good. He's good. I like I like Sheldon Richardson. You got Ogan Joby. Their D-line is good. Uh, they could use a little bit more depth on the D-line. But beyond that, that's good. Linebacker, they have Schobert going into free agency. They got a bunch of safety question marks. Their corners are two developing. Good, two really good corners, Denzel Ward and Greedy Williams, who, who I thought could have been a first-round pick last year. Yeah, so you got those two guys. You also have TJ Carey and um, Terrence Mitchell, who are also corners there. Their depth at corner is pretty good. Um, I don't think they get rid of TJ Carey because they need a slot corner. He, play, he actually plays really well in the slot. So you have TJ Carey. You got Terrence Money Mitchell, who's been a good depth guy for him. And you got Greedy Williams and Denzel Ward. And I think the good thing is the new scheme that's coming in with Joe Woods is going to play a lot more to Greedy Williams' strengths. Press man coverage. Uh, a lot, you know, the, I, the big question is going to be is whether they're going to be rushing or they're going to be using a lot more one gapping or two gapping. It sounds like they're sticking with a four, three, typically that's more of a one gapping defense, but you can do both. Um, you know, how much are they going to run a lot more cover one, cover two, what safeties are they going to get? The real question mark here is safety and linebacker, right? They drafted Mac Wilson. They drafted Sion Takitaki last year. They have Joe Schober potentially going into free agency. Um, they probably will be cutting Christian Kirksey this year because, you know, his contract's kind of heavy on the, uh, on the Browns. Uh, and again, he hasn't really played much the last two years and he hasn't really been a big contributor. So if you cut Kirksey, you keep Schobert, you have to re-sign Schobert, but also Wilson and Sion Takitaki play pretty well. Uh, Demarius Randall's walking in free agency. There goes my IDP cornerback candidate, because if you don't know, if you play IDP in fantasy, find guys who are cross-positional. Uh, so if you find a safety who also counts as a corner, pick them up and play them at corner because they get a lot of tackles. Just your five seconds of uh, IDP fantasy football advice. So talking about, uh, you know, they got Morgan Burnett, former Packer safety in his 30s, tore his Achilles. We don't know how bad the injury is, but it doesn't sound like it's good. So it's one safety who's out. Um Eric Murray didn't even play last year. Sheldra Gredwine showed like he could play pretty well uh, and, and played uh, all over the ba- uh, the defense. And I, I actually kind of liked what I saw from Sheldra Gredwine. It was one of the good Dorsey picks. Um, as corners go, deep at corner, but they probably could even still use more because that's just how it goes in the NFL. It's all about coverage. On the offensive side, right, you got Odell. You got Jarvis. Um, Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb. Possibly Kareem Hunt back, uh, David and Joku. You got a couple of tight ends there that people were fans of, have different opinions of. You had Harris, who was a signing, who used to be with uh, with Dorsey over in KC. You got Ricky Steels Jones, former Arizona tight end. Uh, you got Dontrell Hilliard at running back, who I don't even know why he's even there. They did sign a fullback when uh, after Kevin Stefanski and Andrew Berry came in. Uh, to be on the roster at least, so we'll see if they draft a fullback as well. But um, the real question with this team is O-line. Yeah. That's been the question. That's been the problem. Uh, they traded away Zeitler, who was a gr- to the to the Giants as part of the Olivier Vernon trade, and they definitely made their O-line a lot worse by doing that. Wyatt Teller showed a little bit of uh, – a little bit of progress. They have Eric Cush on a cheap deal as a, as a good backup. Um, but what I think they need to do is address the tackle situation and maybe even address guard too. Uh, both tackles have been meh. Like actually Greg Robinson was not the worst tackle on the team last year. It was, uh, Chris Hubbard. Chris Hubbard was a joke. They should cut him. That's another guy who's going to clear some cap space, uh, and then try and sign a guy in free agency. Who's going to be potentially better. Maybe like a Bulaga. They have Kendall Lamb on the roster. Kendall Lamb played like a game or so last year. Kendall Lamb actually played better than Hubbard in his limited action. So I am not against them maybe only signing one tackle in free agency, maybe transitioning tagging Robinson to try to 
maintain some consistency on the offensive line. Uh, but they have to get rid of Hubbard. They have to replace Hubbard, whether it's with Lamb or somebody else. And they have to draft tackles, too. Like, it's it's just that much of a need that you need this O-line fully fixed. You got Baker Mayfield, who is your franchise quarterback, who took a step back last year, partially because your your head coach was mm-hmm. was a little... How can we say he's not? He was not a good head coach. Um, he was not good. He was not good. He uh, he would call plays when they hadn't practiced him in the uh, in the rundown for weeks on end. He was just not a good coach. Uh, you know, when your OC is walking, to other people being like, "Yo, my head coach is an idiot." And that's happened twice in a row. It happened with Hugh Jackson, and now it happened with uh, uh, Freddie Kitchens. Technically, uh, two out of the last three, you had Greg Williams in there, like between for a couple of games. That's true. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Greg Williams was a head coach. I was talking about a guy who started the season as a head coach, but true. you're right. Yeah. He did not have his OC coming out there calling, telling him, uh, telling people he was an idiot. Probably because his OC was Freddie Kitchens. So, yeah. So that probably <laughs> added to that. Um, the, the O line needs to get fixed. They signed Treader to an extension. He's good. Joel Petonio at left guard's been good. Um, Robinson's actually not even been the weakest link on that O line, but. You know, they're probably going to look to improve upon him unless they can get him to maybe another short-term deal, let him walk in free agency next year. Uh, I mentioned before that the uh, this is a good year for drafting offensive tackles. They're in a good spot. They somehow went from potentially being a playoff team to a top-10 pick in the draft. So take a tackle. Take a tackle. Actually, I think it's very possible they trade back in this draft. This is yeah. a team that, you know, their previous strategy was to dra- uh, trade back, accumulate picks, and turn that into pl- turn them into players, and hopefully that can restock their their team. It's not a bad strategy. It builds up depth on your team. The only problem is that you're hopefully not missing out on a player that you think is really good in that trade back, and then you know you miss out on a guy. You draft a guy who's not as good, so you have to hope your talent evaluation is better in that regard. Um, guy, like I said before, guys like Jedrick Wills, Tristan Wirfs, Andrew Thomas. Um, I'm not as high on Makai Becton or Josh Jones. I think those guys are more towards the end of the first round, top of the second round guys. Um, just because, they, again, they, they have some uh, technique issues. But I could see them the technique getting better. Josh Jones had a little bit of a, a history with he had like a new O-line coach every year for four years in college. So And he looked good at the Senior Bowl from what I've been told. Um, Cleveland's got some cap space, not a ton. Um, they, they've got about, I think it was, pull this up. God, let's see. They have about 52 million in free cap. That's not that bad. A lot of that's about 30 million of that is rollover cap. And, uh, a couple of guys, like I said, they can cut Christian Kirksey, if they want, they can cut TJ Carey and they get a lot more cap. They get about $8 million from it. And then Chris Hubbard clear up a lot of cap as well. I think the trade-off is going to be you're going to cut two or three of those guys and you're going to have to sign people as well. Uh, Safety is a big need. Um, one of the guys we talked about before from the Vikings, Harrison Smith, right? Yeah. He's going to be the big ticket name for free agency at safety this year. I think that's a guy who they might potentially go after, uh, which makes sense because at least Stefanski's familiar with him from being on the Vikings, although none of their, I don't think uh, a good portion of their, de- I think maybe one of their defensive staff members has been on the, the Vikings. So uh, recently when, when Harrison was there, but at least it would be a good pickup for them. Uh, they do need to fix the back end as far as that goes. And if you have that guy and you have two man corners, I think I could see this going very well for them as far as the defense goes. I think re-signing Schobert, that team, like there's certain linebackers that are quarterbacks of the defense, right? Um, Sean Lee was a was one of the big guys for that for a long time. If Sean Lee was not on the field, Dallas's defense took a te- I took a dive. Right, same thing with the Browns. When Joe Schobert's not on the the field, the team takes a dive. So there's certain linebackers who are just quarterbacks of the defense. They make the calls. They're the guys who are the sub- cerebral aspect of the defense. You want that guy on the field. Schobert is that guy. I think they should look into re-signing Schobert and seeing how much that contract's going to cost them. Because uh, I don't think Mac Wilson and Sion Takitaki are guys going to be who replace Schobert. I think Schobert's a special kind of linebacker, and you need that on your defense to make sure it's all functioning very well. Um, 
Baker needs to take a step forward. Um, I think this scheme is going to help him out. It's going to be a lot of rollouts, a lot of play action. Uh, you know, I think Baker was also kind of had to deal with the effect of, you know, there were receivers running the wrong routes because they were not, pro- again, practicing those those plays in practice. He had guys that dropped the ball, knocked the ball up in the air. He had a lot of, like, fluky interceptions this year. Um, Nick Chubb is amazing. I would love to see Nick Chubb do really well this year. I wanted to see Nick Chubb win the rushing title last year. Um, I don't even think he cared about the rushing title. Uh, it's going to be gl- uh, great to see Nick, uh, to see Miles Garrett back. They're going to have some extra picks in this draft because of uh, some trades they did. They have two tr- two third round picks, and uh, their their picks are relatively higher because they're in the top ten. So I don't know. I, I I'm looking forward to how the Browns, the Browns might bounce out of this and come out as a good team. Um, I know you're looking at me with suspect eyes. Yes, but it's I. Oh. Like like I said, they had a really good roster, just bad bad head coach. And, and like you said, if they do a lot of play action and help Baker out, you know, a lot of fluky interceptions. So I, I do have high hopes for the Browns. We all have high hopes. For They're the living. Brown hopes. And um, I, I think this team is going to be – they have – it, it, it's going to be interesting. Like they actually got the the D line coach who is the pa- who is the pass rushing coach for uh, San Francisco. So maybe he, their D line coach is going to be uh, coming over, and again a guy who was there with Nick Bosa and Armstead. Uh, honestly, if they don't get Schobert right and they don't get Harrison, they're going to make a big ticket splash. Eric Armstead. Now I, I don't think they'll do it because I don't think they pay for depth. But Eric Armistead's a crazy yeah. defensive lineman. I think he plays really well. And uh But I, I don't know how he matches up with the guys already on the defense. So there's that. Unless they're you know, unless well, we'll see what happens. Um talked all three levels of the, the defense. Receivers, uh, you know, they might want to look for a third receiver. Um, especially going into this draft. Or again, like you know, if they don't keep Kareem Hunt, they get a pick for Kareem Hunt. They got to find a way of uh, filling out the back end of that running back roster because you never know if Nick Chubb's going to get hurt. Uh, I think Clyde Edwards-Alaire might fall a little bit in this draft. I, I mention him a lot. He's a big favorite of mine. Um, kind of reminds me of Ray Rice without the punching his girlfriend, fiance. Um, receivers that are in this draft is going to be a, it's a deep receiver draft so they might get a guy in the third or fourth round who will start next year as a third receiver you know don't need you don't need too much at receiver because you got odell OB and you got and jarvis jarvis but you do need to fill out the roster they you know they had to cut callaway last year higgins is going into free agency receiver um didn't really you know he, he was just never on the field don't know if that was a uh, dorsey kid, a kitchen thing or a richard higgins thing but he always seemed to play well with baker so, I think they need a deep threat. I think they need a guy like a Terry McLaurin or how they used to have Rashad Perriman. Thought that was a weird thing that they let him go. They do need a guy who's going to take some attention and just be able to take it downfield and house it. That's why they had Callaway. So, I, I, I'm i looking forward to this year. I, again, I think they need to fix their O-line. And that's the major thing. It's all built around the O-line. If they fix that O-line, they miss everything on the O-line. No matter what, they're going to be better. Yeah. So that was the Browns. We finally got to talk about the Browns, right? I get to finally stick my my Browns hat on. I have a Browns hat here somewhere, but I'm not going to put it yeah, on. Let's not drag that up. Uh, um, any final thoughts on the Vikings and the Browns? These teams that are kind of almost tied together a little yeah. bit. I think, as like I do think, Vikings are going to be significantly worse than they were this year. And I'm going to look for improvement for the Browns. I know we said that last year, but I think, uh, like, they're, like on paper, they're too good of a team not to show improvement. And Well, here's the thing. I think the problem with the Browns last year is people expected a lot from them, yeah. right? Everybody thought that this was the team that was going to go, oh, they're going to be in the Super Bowl. They're going to be in the playoffs. And not only that, but we also saw a lot of their division take a step back, right? Like, people weren't expecting Lamar Jackson to be as special as he was. The Steelers, you know, Ben Roethlisberger hurt his elbow. He's probably going to not have an elbow for next year. The Bengals are the Bengals. The Bengals, oh, my God, the Bengals were horrible. And, again, like, they even did well against the Ravens, too. They beat them, right? They beat them. They beat them early on in the season. So, uh, 
I think people expected a lot from him because they saw a lot from him. And then it just kind of all cratered. And it really didn't help when Miles Garrett got suspended. So between those two things, I think the expectations were really high on the Browns, and they didn't meet those expectations. But I think they can next year. So that's my opinion of it. Uh, I know I'm, I wear the... I wear the hat. I wear the the gloves. Uh, I'm a big fan. I also think Vikings. They just li- they live in a hard division. NFC is a hard conference. They got the Packers. I think the Lions will eventually figure out what the Lions can do. And they also got you know Chicago. Yeah. The Bears. The Bears. Anyway, so this has been Draft Vice. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back again next week. Uh, you want follow the podcast at Draft Vice underscore football on instagram follow it at draft vice on twitter you can follow me at brojo death punch uh on basically all platforms that's uh and, and you, you look at the bottom for that uh we, also there's a facebook page i forget about the facebook page i also forget uh if you're listening to this on the on any kind of podcast app whatever your review system is review it leave some stars make us feel good about ourselves we, yeah we say did. you want you want some harry on your on your life yeah I didn't have a Valentine, so at least give this podcast some of frequent on a good rating. There you go. Yeah. And uh, what else can we do? Oh, and if you're watching on YouTube, right, so you could screenshot, to keep a picture of Harry like in your locket somewhere. And then what else you could do is you can subscribe. You like it. You could maybe leave a comment at the bottom of the video. That Tell we'll us never how read. awesome we are. Yeah, we're, I'm never going to read the comments at the bottom of a YouTube video ever because that's how you you know want to kill yourself. But, hey. Go ahead and do it anyway, um, and, and tune in next time for uh, when we try to take over the world using uh, Eggo Waffles. Yeah. I woke up this morning, I was feeling pretty dangerous. I'm about to pass, I'm about to